as a general matter, as a one piece of specific finance, fin, uh, financial advice, I would say, you know, avoid credit cards. Just forget about them. Uh, we're in various businesses that issue credit cards. The American public loves credit cards. But if you start revolving debt on credit cards, you're going to be paying uh, 18 or 20 percent. And you can't make progress in your financial life going around borrowing money at 18 or 20 percent. Warren Buffett has consistently warned us all about the consequences of debt and how banks and other financial institutions secretly make millions from unsuspecting customers. And the sad part is, it's been going on for years. So today, we're going to be talking about why this silent crisis is so serious, its implications, what you need to understand, and also how to avoid the crafty tricks that banks use to keep us all from getting rich. But make sure you stay glued until the end, because we're going to be discussing how we can flip the switch on banks and make them work for us. We will build wealth and stay ahead of everyone else. But first, let's identify the very problem, the lack of relevant information. You see, the problem is that while many, if not most of us, lack a solid financial education or mentors, we are still typically trusting banks to safeguard our money. Worse yet, we sometimes turn banks into our main source of financial information. And guys, this is a huge mistake, because unlike what you think, banks make huge profits when your financial situation deteriorates. Allow us to paint a bigger picture. Imagine you've got $20,000 stashed away in your savings, thinking it's safe and sound. Then you turn around and borrow the same $20,000 from the bank for your car, paying them hefty interest rates for privilege. While that may sound like a fair trade, the reality is far from it. Basically, they just used your own cash to make even more cash off of you. And don't even get us started on mortgages. That money they're lending out, it's not theirs, it's ours, the depositors. Banks don't have a magical money tree. They're just lending out what we've entrusted to them. And the worst part, while they're making money off our deposits, we're only getting fractions back. It's like they're playing with our money, making more in the process, while we're left with crumbs. When you go to the bank to deposit your money, they often try to sell you various services, right? For most people, these services revolve around spending rather than investing. They might offer you credit cards, auto loans, home equity lines of credit, and other forms of credit and debt. But have you ever thought about why? It's quite simple. When you're spending money you don't have, you go into debt. And when you go into debt, the bank is going to make lots of money from interest. Warren Buffett described this conundrum with banks like a game where you put a loaded gun with only a bullet in front of him, offering an infinite amount of money for the 5-6 chance of him surviving. And of course, these were his thoughts. I'm not going to pull it. You, know, you can name any sum you want, but it doesn't do anything for me on the upside. And I think the downside's fairly clear. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not interested in that kind of a game. And yet people do it financially and without thinking about it very much. Uh, Guys, no matter how you look at things, debt simply means that you are spending tomorrow's income today. And the price for you to pay back will be even greater than what you spent because of its interest. So basically, when you borrow money from the bank, whether it's through a credit card, a home equity line of credit, or auto financing, you're essentially using future income to finance current spending. And how does the Oracle of Omaha describe this? And that's foolish. That is just plain foolish. It doesn't make any difference what your IQ is. If you, if you risk something that is important to you for something that is unimportant to you, it just does not make any sense. Think about it this way. What does the average American use their debt for? Typically, this borrowed money from the bank is often used to purchase items like cars, clothing, new gadgets, and vacations, none of which generate financial returns. I mean, sure, you made lots of fun memories on your trip to Dubai, and riding around town with a sleek car and trendy outfits and luxury watches sure gives you a nice rep. But these things have a nasty way of depreciating in value over time, leaving you, the borrower, to pay interest on items that provide no financial benefit, especially in the long term. So, can you see why Warren Buffett believes it's foolish? It goes against his two rules on investing. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule, and that's all the rules there are. Guys, no matter how hard it seems, you really can live a life without falling into debt. Forget about the naysayers and the sort of obvious wave of everyone falling into debt. Because as sad as it seems, in today's society, it's almost like debt is totally normal. In fact, recent statistics suggest that up to 60% of Americans are still living from paycheck to paycheck due to inflation, 
pushing 48% of Americans to depend on credit cards to cover essential living costs. Here in America, in this economy, having credit card debt, financing a car, and student loans, it's just so common. It's like everybody's in the same boat. We all joke about it, saying, misery loves company. Because honestly, who isn't dealing with some kind of debt? But hey, this is a very big problem. A recent survey from Clever Real Estate revealed that 61% of Americans are dealing with credit card debt, averaging around $5,875. Plus, 23% admit to adding more debt each month, and 14% missed a payment last year. It's a stark look at the financial challenges many people are facing. But hey, it doesn't have to be that way for you. You have the power to achieve financial freedom. All it takes is breaking away from the status quo of relying solely on banks like everyone else does. It's time to roll up your sleeves and tackle those consumer debts head on through hard work and determination. But it all begins with this solid piece of advice from Warren Buffett. I think people should, should avoid using credit cards as a, you know, as, as a piggy bank to be raided. I, I if you want to become rich, the first thing you've got to do is stop giving all of your money to the bank. Because when you do that, you will have more money for yourself. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what about good debt? Having already discussed the pretty obvious fact that buying things like cars, gadgets, clothes, and financing vacations with money borrowed from the bank is bad debt, let's talk about the concept of good debts. In a situation where you use debt to go out and buy real estate or invest in your business, that's actually good debt because the assets you buy can appreciate in value, thus allowing you to make money from the bank. So that's why many Americans take out loans to build their businesses or portfolios. But here's the thing, all debt is technically bad debt. And Warren Buffett again advised us to avoid it like a plague. Take a look at this interesting real life account he made some time ago. Charlie and I probably have seen some more high IQ people really extraordinarily IQ people destroyed by leverage. We saw long-term capital management where we had, with years and years of experience of what they were doing, and, and uh, you know, it all turned to pumpkins and mice. And Now, we're not saying that no one should go out and use debt to make smart investments, as after all, some of the biggest companies and investors do this from time to time. But the difference between them and the average American is that they understand the risks associated with debt. They know that there's only a thin line between good and bad debt. And if they don't manage the former properly, that good debt can turn into bad debt very quickly. So you see, Mr. Buffett has been right all along. If you can't pay for it, don't buy it. And uh... It really hurts to say this, but not everyone is cut out for the game of using debt to invest in real estate or expand their business. In fact, it's not suited for the majority of people. Only a small, determined group can truly be willing to put in the effort, take on the risks, and invest the time needed to effectively manage that debt. And that's why the Oracle of Omaha dropped this simple yet effective advice. Credit card debt is something you bring on yourself, and it's way better, it's way easier to stay out of trouble than to get out of trouble financially. And, and uh, I will guarantee if you run a big credit card debt, you will be in trouble uh, probably the rest of your life in terms of uh, your financial situation. And this is why it is so important for you to understand how financial institutions work. If you want to become wealthy, you've got to stop listening to what they say, because they're only out for themselves. Secondly, you've got to stop taking loans just because everyone else is doing it. And finally, you have to start taking a look at your own finances and understand how you can stop failing Warren Buffett's ultimate rule by losing money. To start with, you've got to roll up those sleeves and start making some hard financial sacrifices. Maybe it's selling the car, downsizing your living space, parting with some of your belongings, cutting back on dining out, or even temporarily putting a hold on luxuries like Netflix or vacations. Sacrifices like these might be necessary steps towards getting your finances back on track. However, the goal isn't to live small forever. Warren Buffett lives a frugal life and has even advised everyone to live below their means, but he doesn't advocate extreme frugality. The goal of living small is that so you can build a strong foundation to live a life of financial freedom. After that, watching your expenses is just a form of maintaining your standing so that you don't fall off in the future. But in order to build that base, 
you have to work on earning more so that you can pay off debts and other expenses that are keeping you from being rich. Not that long ago, we came across a pretty interesting article by Wells Fargo on how untapped equity can sustain consumers. Now, what this article is about is that in 2023, we had an increase in the cost of living, and we all know that inflation was there, so people were unable to continue purchasing the items that they wanted. As a result, consumers faced a difficult decision, cutting back on their expenses or plunging into credit card debt. This is where Wells Fargo discovered an incredible idea, cash out refinancing. For the uninitiated, cash-out refinancing is a financial strategy where you take out a new mortgage that's larger than your existing one, allowing you to receive the difference in cash. So basically, you're refining your mortgage for more than you owe and pocketing the difference in cash. But while this can be useful for consolidating debt, funding home improvements, or covering other expenses, it increases the amount you owe on your home and may come with additional fees or even higher interest rates. So back to the article. Wells Fargo was like, you don't need to worry about the dilemma. Yeah, the value of homes has increased, so why don't you just take this money out of your house and complete a cash-out refinance with us? With the money you saved, you could buy the car of your dreams or take a vacation. Because of this juicy offer, lots of people probably refinanced their mortgage, thinking they'd found a golden solution. But little did they know that it would still bite them back. Some of them may already be feeling the pain. Like we said earlier, banks really don't care about you. In fact, they want to make money off of you. They want you to spend the money you don't have. And for the average person, that means that when you spend money, you don't have to finance things that don't make you any money. As a matter of fact, you are funding depreciating assets. You will therefore have to work even harder to pay off that item when you go out and finance things like your clothes, car, and vacations with money that you don't have. As a result, you will end up paying double what the item cost because you didn't have the money to begin with. Because you didn't have the money in the first place, you now have to work for six months to pay off that vacation instead of working for three months to purchase it. And this is the point at which the typical individual is drowning in debt, given that the way this system operates. Ordinary people are the bank's slaves. That's why you shouldn't be that person in this situation. So, if you want to flip the switch on banks to make them rich, you might want to pay close attention because now we're going to be talking about three ways you can use banks to their fullest. Because, yes, when it comes to building wealth, banks can be valuable partners in your financial journey. One way to do this is offering interest on your savings through high-yield savings accounts that offer fantastic rates. You see, savings accounts, especially high-yield savings accounts, typically grow your money via compound interest. And this means you earn lots of interest on both the principal balance and the interest that that principal earns. So you see, having a high-yield savings account means that the interest accrued on your initial deposit grows, and so does the interest earned on that accumulated interest. But what we love most about these high-yield accounts is that they're significantly better than traditional savings accounts in terms of interest. While the national average return on traditional savings account is just 0.46%, Many high-yield savings accounts offer massive interest rates, sometimes over 5%. And these rates can help you reach your savings goals faster, instead of just letting your money sit idly in the bank. But it's not just about stashing your cash away. It's also about understanding how money works. That's where financial education comes in. Banks can be a friendly advisor who will help you demystify financial concepts, from budgeting to investing. It's like having a trusted mentor guide you through the maze of personal finance, giving you the tools to make smart decisions with your hard-earned money. But please don't fall for anything that has to do with taking loans. It can be of an assistance, but in most cases, it wouldn't help you in the long run. Plus, how can you even make wealth when you have to pay someone back? It's like taking a step forward and two steps back. And speaking of guidance, banks can also offer personalized financial planning services to help you chart a course towards your goals. Their well-trained advisors can help customers create budgets, prioritize financial goals, and develop strategies to achieve them. This may involve saving for emergencies, paying off debt, investing for retirement, and planning for major life events such as buying a home or funding education. By taking a holistic approach to financial planning, banks can help you optimize your financial resources, minimize taxes, and make informed decisions about saving, investing, and spending. Finally, and only as a wildcard option, you can use banks for good debt. 
It's kind of counterintuitive, but yes, you can actually leverage banks to manage debt effectively by consolidating high interest debts into lower rate loans, negotiating better terms, and refinancing existing loans. Plus, you can even utilize budgeting tools and financial counseling offered by the banks to create repayment plans and prioritize debt repayment. By making timely payments and improving credit scores, customers can access favorable loan options and lower interest rates, ultimately reducing their debt burden and achieving financial stability. However, as we previously discussed, be sure you are aware of what you're getting into and have adequately considered the disadvantages of having debt, or worse, of not being able to pay it back.